On today's show, how storytelling can help market your music. I'm looking forward to this one, Sheldon. Cue title sequence. 30 Minute Music Marketing. For musicians who want to get better at marketing their music. Hi, I'm Greg. Hello, I'm Sheldon, and this is 30 Minute Music Marketing, the show for independent artists and DIY musicians who want to get better at marketing their music. What is this now, episode four? Episode four. 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 Thank- Who'd have thought it, eh? I know, and we've still got more to come. So <laughs> thanks for all the um, questions and subscriptions and comments and stuff like that. Uh, we will be, if you have a question, we can turn that into content and we can tell you exactly the things that you want to hear as well. So as Sheldon rightly pointed out, today's episode is about storytelling. Storytelling. Now then, you don't know a lot about Not storytelling. Not from a band perspective. Well, it's funny because when you think about it, musicians as a whole don't really know a lot about storytelling. And I'm here today to say that it's quite important when it comes to marketing your music. And if you were to actually to start using storytelling within, you know, as part of your marketing mix, you'll probably find you're going to end up with a uh, with a better result, uh, a more engaged fan base, a fan base who cares a lot more about you as a musician and about the music that you make. So if that sounds good to you, then stick around with us for the next 25 or so minutes and uh, maybe have a pen and paper ready. Are you going to do um, put the, the, the time stamps I do for all our topics? I do feel that to encourage people to uh, watch uh, more of our videos, uh, we are going to, uh, in the description within YouTube, certainly, I will be writing down at, at which point you can go to. So if you wish to skip to the end, you can do so knowing exactly where the end is or anywhere in the middle. Don't, or, or the don't skip a minute. Don't skip a minute. So it will there to aid the viewer. So, I mean, in terms of going back to today's session, the only storytelling I know is, is through that not guilty pleasure for a lot of people, obviously the X Factor. Or Britain's Got Talent. Well, that, that's 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 contained within my uh, my, my first so chapter. So that is my experience of storytelling within a music well, well, perspective, and and that's fine. So my the, the the first maybe we'll have a caption up here now that says why storytelling? Question mark. Well, I'm here to say to you, Greg, that stories are a universal language that everyone can understand. You you sort of grasp the concept of that. It's almost a bit like, I suppose, um, if you, uh, you know, even products, I suppose, companies who make products, if you look on their about section, that's usually a story. A story, of some the history, sort. Uh, yeah, no, maybe the history of the founder. But on the whole, stories engage us, they hold our attention, and they, we find them entertaining. You think about all aspects of entertainment, from the shows that you see on television, the films that you go to see at the cinema, for the most part, stories, you know, from, from highfalutin drama down to your uh, your Marvel superhero things, it's all stories. How we get the information about the world around us in terms of news, they refer to that as news stories. Okay. So, so th- the way that we make sense of the world, the way that we often educate ourselves, if you think about young children, and if you're trying to teach uh, children not to go off with strangers, you won't necessarily just wag your finger at them and, and tell them the perils. You know, th- you, we contain that within the, you know, a, some form of fable or what have you, how, how not to go off with a, uh, a, a wicked old woman who can lead you off to a house made of gingerbread. Didn't the prodigy happen to sample this into one of their songs? I, I don't know. Charlie says... I don't know. But anyway, they, they help us remember, as I said, the, inf- you know, the information. It, it, it's, how, it's how we process the world. It, it, it's almost like the raw building blocks of our own sort of personal experiences it's how we make sense of the world so if we can use some form of storytelling within our own uh, music marketing it becomes maybe more memorable more entertaining more relatable and it makes you potentially more understandable as a, as the creator I, of that music i suppose in some respects a lot of bands that i see are not guilty maybe that's just too strong a word but uh, they certainly display a, you know, ultimately the, the focus is so much on the craft that, that it's just presented by four people that 
don't mean anything. They could be almost replaceable at any given moment because there's no um, there's no further connection. Connection, than... and, and, and again, it's understanding, and we'll, we'll sort of cover this in the next section, but th when you think about your music, for the most part, it is, and, and digitally now, an intangible series of, of zeros and ones, and you want to become more than just the music, and I'm sure I'm going to repeat this particular phrase to death, in a world whereby you can access pretty much any music at your disposal, and it won't cost you a dime, how do you actually add value to uh, to your music and you know, storytelling can be one of the ways how you know you can uh, you can do that. So, in terms of aiding storytelling, creating characters or caricatures of band members, would that I mean to an extension of that? Let's, am I getting ahead let, of myself? Yeah, let, let's just put that to one side for the moment. Let's okay. talk about the the store the type of story that most uh, people will be familiar with, and that's the back story. So your backstory is everything that's happened to you, which you think might be relevant to your audience from, from, from at a point you necessarily decide right up to this particular moment in time. And I'm going to use the J word now. I'm going to use the word journey. It puts your journey into context. So you were mentioning reality TV shows yes. and how they have a, a backstory and, a, and a, a little potted history of all their contestants. And the reason why they do that is that without those, uh, every TV talent show is just a succession and a parade of people who are quite good singers. And they're nearly all quite good singers. So how does the audience actually begin to relate or emote or feel attached. Or find a favourite. Or find a favourite to, oh, I've got, to, I've got to tell you, you've got Netflix in, in the UK, uh, American Idols uh, on Netflix. So you can get your uh, American Idol fix. On Netflix? Yes. I didn't think that would there happen. There you go. It's just my guilty pleasure. There you go. You, really? You watched that? Yeah. It's great. I've, well, I followed up on Dirk Gently, but I ain't going to be doing that. Oh, well. I didn't realise that was written by Douglas It's my, well, like, like I say, my one and only guilty pleasure. So this is it. So again, a, a succession of very good, probably young and very attractive singers. And it's like, how do you differentiate one singer from another? So here, you know, here comes a girl and she's, she's quite a good singer. And you think, well, quite a good singer. I've seen hundreds of other singers before. But bang, and then we cut to her telling a backstory. And it's like she's grown up on a, on a farm in Louisiana and she's been dirt poor. And her, her granddaddy, he used to play guitar and he could, he could never be in a, oh, he was, he was going to be in a band and then he had a car crash and his legs wouldn't work and he never got to, he, he never got to go on tour. And, and, and he gave that same very guitar that, that he had and passed it down to his granddaughter. And now he's doing it for, for her granddad. And it's like, I, I'm getting behind this girl now. I initially thought you were talking about Mariah Carey's life story, but she worked as a waitress. Is that but... similar? Probably not too dissimilar, but again, but again, you know, it helps put that particular person's struggles into context. It, you know, it helps us understand why that particular person is doing this. You know, it gives them, it gives them, uh, uh, lets you understand the reason why. It makes them real. And, well, there you go. That's that's a very good turn of phrase. So a backstory is very important. My only question. Carry on. Questions with are good. this is that. A lot of, I mean, I, you have mentioned the phrase in the past, you know, if, if a band comes to you and they say, hi, I'm such and such, and this is my band, and your common uh, immediate retort is, what's your story? And a lot of bands, they kind of, if they were to lay the truth out bare, it might not make for interesting storytelling. Is there a limitation on where we can go with this? Well, um, what I would say is, um, well, you know, as, as we know, well, I'm not saying you're jumping ahead, but look, hold that thought. Come back to me with that. Okay. Um, um, if you're a new artist on the way up, what will generally happen is if, uh, if, you, if you're featured in, in a magazine or a, a blog or some sort, your, your backstory will be featured by uh, a particular uh, publication. So Instead of showing a page, should we take a screenshot of that and then bring that up in the video? It, you can do. Okay. Ink. There we go. You've got Q Magazine. Did you buy that? Uh, I, I, I buy it every now and again, historically. Wow. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a person who's approaching 50, so, you know, white, middle, middle story, class, middle age. Your story is Q changing Magazine. weekly. Well, well, here we go. This, this is Micah Blanco, uh, 
controversial, um, gender stereotype challenging rapper. So this particular article um, uh, depicts this particular rapper's struggles, where, where he comes from. And it says here, there is the quote, I've been born black and gay. When I began cross-dressing, I saw this uh, other dimension of people's prejudice. We sort of get a potted history of where they've come from, the circumstances that surround their, uh, you know, their uh, gestation and formation as an artist and their own personal set of circumstances as to why they're doing what they're doing. It, it helps us understand why they're doing it and as you say it, ma it makes them it makes them feel all the more real and we, we live in a, in, in a world that isn't particularly <laughs> real at the moment is it too early for me to say could any of that be fabricated well or that's that's one example right look let me i'm given that you're given the punchline of, of this away but I i'm, I'm sure you're familiar more familiar than um, What's his face down there? Of uh, C Six Steve. Yes. So um, here we was. We met him, didn't we? I have. Well, I did as well. Did you? No, I met him at Kendall Corley. All oh, right. Yeah. Bumped into him. He's name dropping now. He didn't know who I was. I didn't know who. Well, he well, was. well, there, there you go. <laughs> you, you were happy bedfellows. But that the whole backstory of C Six Steve when he first came on the scene is that you know he'd been a drifter, he'd been a hobo, he'd been you know riding the 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 railroad. Freight cars. He'd been a cowboy. With his stick and his little bag over his he'd shoulder. He'd been a paramedic, and he'd slept in his car and all that sort of thing. And here, here he comes now. He's playing, uh, like you say, with his uh, with his stick and a, a, a couple of cat's whiskers uh, across it. And look where he is now, playing playing guitar to all those people and his dungarees. There is a slight problem with that story. Yeah, a few people were a little bit peeved when they read, they found out that he'd been in the music industry for forty years. He just made it all up. Um, cue no doubt to the uh, cover of the seventies disco album that he was on. Um, he was in. Uh, he was in a. He was singing for a disco band uh, called Crystal Glass, I think. It's very. You can check it out on, on YouTube. And also, so, doesn't he happen to be like ten years younger than? He, he's than actually he's ten years younger than his official sort of music age. And normally, they, they shave years. They, you know, they uh, they lie. But no, no, he's ten, uh, yeah, he's ten years younger than his official showbiz age. So there are potentially problems when you try and fabricate the truth. But if you are telling a story, like you're saying, how do you make it potentially interesting? It might need a little bit of editing. Um, you've seen the Queen film Bohemian Rhapsody. Yes, I enjoyed it. You, you enjoyed it, but that's not actually the the exact Queen story. That that story has been edited, and creative things have been license. a little bit of creative license in order for it to make a good. Story. So if you are a musical artist and you're trying to jot down maybe all the things that have happened to you, all the things that are that have contributed to uh, to for you to be, become a musician or to be in a band or all the individual circumstances of those particular uh, band members, you might have to not necessarily get creative, but the way that I always like to think of it, it's, it's like faders on a mixing desk. Maybe you have to turn some things up. Maybe you have to turn some things down. And it's not really just uh, a series of facts and points and this particular person joined at this stage and uh, the singer met the drummer at this particular point. What you're trying to do is, within this story, you, you're trying to encapsulate why you're actually creating the music that you yes. And obviously, you know, your own individual story is going to be unique to, to you know, to yourself and your, uh, like I say, your own individual set of circumstances. So, and I suppose as you put here on this point, it, it will help make your journey unique. Yes. So it's a, it, it is a case of maybe doing a little bit of mind mapping, writing down all these sort of in incidents, all the uh, all your influences, and again trying to tell the person at the other end who's likely to to read this particular backstory where they'll probably find it. Uh, more than likely on your bio page, on your website, or you could have a p very potted version on some sort of press release. Um, I sent up a press release for a gig. I'm doing a couple of weeks in gigging uh, in uh, in, Cam mm -hmm. in sorry in Cambridge. We're gigging in Cambridge, and I had to create a uh, like a two or three very condensed version of our bio to try and pique the 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 interest of uh, the newspaper uh, journalist. So at the other end. In terms of if we can use your band as an example, 
please do. Why did you come up with characters for the band members? Well, we're in a, a unique set of circumstances in the band that I'm in. It, it very much leans towards the, uh, the comedy uh, side of things. Uh, so it just it it just fits. It, it, it it's almost a brand of showbiz within itself. But I think I think if you think about it, the if you are an entertainer, that sort of lends itself to uh, to becoming a, another person. The person who is on stage is not the same person who is sort of backstage. So it's just an, an exaggerated uh, version uh, of. I that. like the fact that you tell me off when I call you by your real names when you're together as the band, and I'm supposed to refer to them as character. You've got to uh, maintain the illusion. I find that quite difficult. Not maintaining illusion, just kind of being a part of their world. But I'm getting there slowly. So that's the backstory. It's the previous narrative of what's happened to you, trying to encapsulate um, why you're doing what you're doing, and then putting um, that information, as I say, within a uh, within a biography or within maybe some form of press release for future use. So that's called, that's your backstory. Um, the next uh, particular chapter of this particular um, podcast is using stories to sell your music. So we're talking about press just then and me um, trying to uh, pique the interest of a journalist at the, uh, the end of a Cambridge newspaper. Um, journalists, people in the media, they want a good story. So if you can present your band or yourself as a musician or artist to them as a story and if you're what you're doing at the moment in terms of maybe uh, the, the show that you're putting on the album that you're releasing the single that you're releasing if you can um, supply and encapsulate a story within whatever musical project that you're doing at the moment you're more than likely to uh, to, to gain more of their interest than if you just said here's our new single, or here's our new album, or here's us going on tour. It provides more of a, more of a leverage. A story provides an excuse for those particular people to cover you and to give you some form of attention. Uh, Sheldon, yes. can you give us an example of a good story? I've got two examples, he says, referring to his clipboard. So, uh, Bon Iver, I'm sure you, you're aware of Bon Iver. No, no, it's it's got a very it's got a very narrow well, musical not, history. I'm going to say Bonobo, but Bonnie alt folk. He's American. He's very big. He's very Google him. Right. Anyway, is he big ends in the United Kingdom, or is he big in the US, or is he big in, big everywhere apart? He's from big where everywhere I am. apart from apart from your house. Never mind. Never mind. So please, but anyway, please tell me about this Bonnie Bonnie Right here we go. Here's here's a, here's a no, here's you are a journalist. You be the journalist. Okay. He uh, he locates himself in a remote cabin in the woods of northwestern Wisconsin at the onset of winter to record an album to lament the breakup from his girlfriend. It's sort of like he's gone off into the woods to be alone into a into a you know a shack in the middle of nowhere to to be alone with his thoughts. He's broken up with his girlfriend. What music comes? From that, it's like, oh, that's a good story. Whereas if you just gone, I just recorded an album. There you go, listen to that. Well, yes, I mean, and I suppose if that's the if that is part of the story, then I suppose the story extends possibly into some of the lyrical content of the songs. Yeah, but it makes it you know, it, it's almost like a, a, a pitch. If like you know, if you were pitching a, a film, and it's like, oh, what happens in the film? Well, in, in this particular case, we've got, we've got again. It's it's a little bit more real. It puts the the music itself into context. Well, I mean, uh, I know you're going to diss me for saying this Carry name, on. but I don't care. Um, when Sheryl Crow broke up with um, Lance Armstrong after their engagement, um, she did she, well. She did well to break up from him as well. She went over to Spain uh, for a, I don't know an undisclosed period to, and she took three albums. As inspiration, so she took uh, "Goodbye Yellow Brick Road," a George Harrison record, and I don't know the third one. And, <laughs> There's uh, nothing like a complete story. Is there? Know, but it's three records. I know that much. And then she basically did something similar, wrote a record on an album on, uh, you know, her breakup of, of, you know, of ex fiance. But what I didn't realize, I didn't know this until after I'd heard, and this is the album "Wildflower," which, in my opinion, is her best piece of work. Um, it's only until adults when you find out the story that you then connect the two 
you connect the songs, you connect, and then you kind of go, oh, oh. that's really, and then it, it suddenly takes uh, the, 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 the power of the songs and just makes it. Amplifies it. Oh yeah, big time. Then you just, you kind of, and then my admiration for her as an artist, when you suddenly realize that she's laid her soul out bare and literally put her heart on her sleeve, and then you just kind of go, oh, that, that's really, that's really special. So it, 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 it makes you have a greater attachment to the, the song. If you mm -hmm. can understand the song and the reasons why a particular album or, or song has been written, then you, you, you feel, you get a better understanding, you feel more attached mm -hmm. to that song. That song you, you, you like the artist even more. So as, as people who write songs, and create music, we are a victim of all the circumstances that surround us, and that's what we, that's what we sort of produce. And the more that we can tell people the circumstances surrounding that through the medium of stories, again, if you're writing a press release, or even as you know, you could be creating video blogs as you go into the studio, or as, actually as you write the music to tell these stories. And like you say, it gives it gives more weight. To the end product. I mean, the, initially, I was going to say, you know, going over to uh, writing a record about the breakup of your girlfriend or breakup of your partner does sound a little cliched, but at the same time, I suppose it's something that most people can relate to. Yeah, and what I do mean, you think? It didn't help. It didn't do Adele any. Else. I was just about to mention Adele. Although I still want to hear his story. Now, now, oh, don't tell me that. Now, I, I could have, I could have, if we did, <laughs> if you told me that five years ago, I could have written the the Adele bloke album. It, it, honestly, I want to hear his side just to level out the. Oh, God, oh, don't tell me that now. And how many records did that sound that Adele one? Oh, it, was, it was big, wasn't it? I, it, it? It was annoyingly big. Right, so I won't give you one of my examples. My second example, because I think, well, I think, I think the Cheryl Crow one is. Uh, Okay. It's, it's, particularly, uh, it's particularly... Even though it's, it's based on the same... Con same... It, 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 yeah, the same sort of set of circumstances. But, but again, people don't, people don't explain where the music comes from. And, and like I say, it, it's the, the thing that we're always trying to do is to give our music more, more weight and more heft. And the, the more times you do that in, through whichever ways, and we're going to look at branding in a couple of weeks, it, it makes your music more valuable. And mm. you can actually start to make a, a little bit of coin off it. So I'm just laughing at one of the things that you put here. Oh, yeah. You'll come to in a minute. Okay, okay. So, right, so the, the third section, sorry. I was going to say the third section you've put here, continuing your story. Yes, so we've got, um, we've got backstory, telling people where you've come from up to this particular moment in time. We've got telling sort of individual stories around your musical projects and all your other projects and the, the, the reasons why they've been created. But we can continue our story each and every day. It sounds like a, a little bit of a cliche, but um, each day is a, is a new page of another chapter of you as a musician or, or you as an artist, and you continue to tell your story each and every day. And would you to kind of would you plan a story to tell, or would you just try and make the most of um, everyday events? Well, the 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 phrase that I I would I would always use is that you are your own reality TV show, and in the same way that reality shows follow you know celebrities and other people of importance around doing their daily uh, activities and finding the you know the interesting stories within there i think what you have to realize is that you have to self edit i mean you know if if you're a drummer i don't necessarily want to see you having your breakfast however what do you do during your day to day activities especially you know if you're if you're rehearsing or if you're going on a on a gig on a friday or a saturday or, or a thursday night i mean within the course of a week you probably have to choose which bits to um blog about or to uh, or, or to film but even if you just think about posting to the videos if you think about it you've got access using social media channels to uh, what is basically a TV network? Mm. You can you know you can go live. You can broadcast your own TV shows. It is remarkable. But each but each and every day you continue to tell your story, and you can choose to show your audience which bits of your day to day activities you think they would find interesting. And again, you are storytelling each and every day through what you post on social media. And that's the thing in terms of like I saw a, a band from the, the borough, so to speak. Um, 
who had just gone on tour on to do a gig in London, and they they basically did like a road trip, little road trip movie, um, of them going down to this gig in London and stuff like that. Kept the edits. It wasn't like massively polished. It was just like you know, quite abrupt. It's probably just been edited in iMovie on an iPhone or or, so, or uh, an equivalent on an Android. So it's all kept kind of pretty rough and around the edges, and it showed them. That that journey included showing the fact the car got broken into and all the gear got stolen after coming out of London. Uh, but, you know, they, they turned that not into a positive, but they're kind of going, well, we wish people would stop stealing our gear, but it's not going to take our music away from well, us. Well, the, the, the thing that I always say that, uh, that if you think about right now, um, there's a, there's a, what used to be the Discovery Channel in the UK has now been renamed DMAX. And I go around, I go around, go around, I go around to my mother's, and she's 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 always got it on. And there's um, there's a show that we I'm, I'm forced to watch called uh, uh, Siberian Cutters. It's basically people chopping wood in uh, Russia, and that in itself doesn't sound particularly exciting. But what it is is that and all these stages they've got they've got jeopardy. So, so it, it's a case Trial of... And it, tribulation. It, it's not like they, they have to get from, from one particular camp up to the forest. They always go, we've got to get to the forest within 24 hours. And it's like, oh, there's jeopardy, jeopardy, until they get there. And then they've got, all oh, right, well, we've got to chop down a number of trees for this, like, sample um, of, of wood cutting that they've got to do. Oh, but they've only got a certain amount of time to do it. So, so all, you know, reality it, TV shows rely on... like the ice truckers? It's, it's, a, it's a similar sort right. of premise. If it's basically cold and they get people to do stuff. But, like you were saying there about, about being broken into, any time that you can bring an element of, of jeopardy into into proceedings and, and you know, show people your your struggles, that's particularly good. It's similar to, to that, there was an occasion last year when my band was on our way down to uh, to a festival in, in July, it was, and we got a flat tyre and we had to call the breakdown services out and then we couldn't get the tyre, our spare tyre off from a chassis underneath the vehicle. Had the bolts corroded? And the bolts had corroded. Um, and salt in our water. And then we had to, well, um, the repair truck, they had to take me into the nearest town to try and get a tyre, but the vehicle's an import. And <laughs> it, the first place didn't have it. And, and all the while the clock is ticking and we only get a certain amount of time. If you've, if you've ever played a festival in a big festival, it's not just a case of, of riding up to the uh, the main stage. And uh, there's all these places you've got you've uh, you've got an artist. Um, Which gig was this? Uh, Why not festival? When? Last year. Nice. But how many they, times did the battery run out? Uh, d let's not talk about battery. <laughs> let's not talk about battery. But uh, the uh, the lads were streaming some of this in my absence, and again ch bringing people into into the story itself and letting people in on the drama and on the jeopardy. So if yeah. yeah. That's good. It would the, work quite well. It, wouldn't, it? It, it, it was quite an interesting video. But a, another thing to remember is the things that you find quite boring is the things that the, your audience will actually find really sort of fascinating. You don't, you, the, 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 you know, potentially the waiting around or being in a rehearsal room or being backstage at a gig. Most people will, will never go backstage at a venue, no matter how large or small that is. So, you know, you are the window into your world and, so, and you can give people um, by storytelling and, and insight into what it's like being you and again they get a, a better appreciation and a better understanding of your individual set of circumstances. Well, it's it, With you mentioning that I am going to be this year at Kendall Calling going to be showing people because we're obviously there to film you um, to show people what it's like backstage at Kendall Calling mm. which will be waiting for a trolley dolly thing to turn up that never turns up and no it will hopefully be more interesting God. and amusing so uh, another format uh, in terms of social media that's excellent for storytelling is instagram stories the clues in the name and um you can get the opportunity just to do uh, a little sort of snapshot and the way i always refer to instagram stories is if you take enough of them over the course of a day they're like um comic strip panels Okay. It's like a little snapshot at one particular moment in time. And as, as daft as this may seem, uh, Bob, our bass player, um, after the, our gig on Saturday night, uh, we were, I was in bed the morning after the premiere in, and I was watching his Instagram stories, and they were from several 
inside the bus on the way down to the gig and then there was one where he just got to the venue downstairs and there was one where we were unpacking the gear and then we were, we were waiting for the uh, the lead singer to turn up because he was arriving on the train and there was one during soundcheck and I'm watching this and, and being and entertained by and I was there how mad's that so but, if, it, if it was interesting for me how must how interesting must it have been for everyone else so you get an opportunity with Instagram stories just to take a, a little sort of slice of time like I say almost like a, a comic strip on a comic just to show people what is happening to you right there right then you're telling your story and also it's a memory for you isn't it you, well, you at can... some point in the future you can look back at that and kind of go feel all nostalgic well you don't use Instagram stories you, you've got to see I'm going them. to oh. I mean I would more likely use that than MySpace yeah oh the, <laughs> the, 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 of, of course um, the week uh, the week that we're filming this it was the week that MySpace decided to uh, accidentally lose um, Anything. Mi millions of 128k mp3s they just threw them in the recycle Anything thing. before 2016 so basically that's Everything. anything that was used on... Someone just wanted to free up some service space. They worked out it was going to cost about two dollars a gig to delete the files right so instead or no to my to my great oh, migrate them, to, them. So, so they went accidentally it was the work experience in turn that's what got rid of them so if you're not using your social media channels to tell your stories you really are missing out i'm going to look at insta stories myself because it's, it's not something i use yet so i'm going to have a look at that and start posting some stories he's, he's a bit behind the times bless him but that's one of the reasons why i'm here i'm here to you know prod him and to push him but uh, <coughs> excuse me but yeah that's and the thing that i think needs saying here is that when you are basically telling your story on a moment by moment basis um, using social media it does require a bit of work and a bit of effort because what it would be nice to do is it would just be nice to to when i'm gigging just to rock up get the gear sorted um sound check bang put your feet up and basically do nothing then on, on, until the gig but what you've now got to also do is you've got to basically be a reporter on your own life to show people what's happening and that does require a little bit of extra effort and um, a, a mindset to actually look out for good content to put on your stories and you have to think right what's going to be good for storytelling here so you've got you've got to be constantly thinking and looking out for these opportunities and that's a little bit of extra work but it's worth it it's worth it it's worth it like I say so that's that storytelling in a nutshell lots of uh, things to think about anyone who actually applies this the advice that Sheldon's given today please send us links to what you're doing to show us your stories let us uh, you know let's see what you guys are up to you're seeing what we're doing so let's see what you're so let us see what you are doing now would you say from this in terms of your own because obviously we're in your 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 lovely facility we're in studio b again yes, rather, rather than studio a so he's got two studios he's showing off now so if you if i went to the about uh have you got an about page on your uh, studio website yes we do would you say that would you say that you've told the story on your about page i have relied on the power of text which i possibly need to help with the power of video so uh, to be honest i i have been thinking over the last week that the the entire website could do with a bit of an overhaul but you can sort of see the benefit as to if you were to take a, another look at that rather than your about page just being a maybe a list a of uh, of gear if you were to maybe incorporate a story as to oh, why yeah, you think... why you formed the studio and the you know th there is something inside you something burning inside you greg isn't there yeah, it, 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 it is heartburn yeah. but th th there must be a reason why you're doing this rather than working in an office somewhere yeah i'm scared of hard work but, but th th there is there is that but the, I mean, the, there's, it, yeah, the, 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 there's, the there's obviously various things that have happened to you in your in your life which has caused you to divert from working in an office to owning oh, and yeah. running your own studio and rehearsal com um, complex and content uh, delivery studio. So, so what you need to do is you need to put that you need to find those elements which which create your own personal story, so that I, so that people won't when they do go to your, your about page. Well, 
what I will do to give myself a, 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 um, a deadline, which we have talked about in, in previous videos, is that I'm going to apply this and then I will share the link Ooh. on our next video after this one so people can see me implementing the stuff we've talked about today. You can't say fairer than that, ladies and gentlemen. One final question, Carry because on. this is something that I've only been told. Are you familiar with TikTok? Um, it's a little bit young for me. I am obviously I am familiar with it. But I was speaking to another musician who's found the reach and, and engagement on TikTok to be very very good. Oh. So not to talk ahead, but if you have any experience of something like that, please let us know what it is like. I'm going to go and have a look as well. But I'm going to apply the stuff that we're doing today. Right, I'm, uh, I'm going to have to uh, check that out myself. Right, that concludes uh, today's activities. Thanks very much for listening at the end. Cheers. Feel free to subscribe, so smash that, whatever subscribe. they do. Um, uh, you can listen Comment. to us on, on a podcast as well if you want to uh, take us with you on, as you go about your daily business. Thanks very much for watching. We will see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.